So let's talk about Donald Trump's math problem. I don't really want to talk about immigration and executive orders anymore, but there is a very clear math problem where we don't have to discuss politics. We don't have to discuss policy. It's just basic fucking math, right? And there's two big areas where this is a real issue that I want to talk about. One of them is taxes and tariffs. And the other is oil and energy policy. Um, I'm not going to dig into the oil and gas and energy thing too much on the policy side. Uh, Mr. Global does a phenomenal job of that and knows way more about it than I ever fucking will in my life. And that is like his whole feed revolves around that topic. Uh, so if you want to hear somebody really dig into the details on that, go follow him and watch his videos. I'm sure most of you already know who he is, but he's the expert on that one. Um, but again, there's, there's very basic math problems that we run into with some of Trump's rhetoric versus reality. The first, when it comes to taxes and tariffs, the devil is going to be in the details. And we don't know what those are yet. Um, we have heard numbers as high as 65% and as low as 10%. And it really all depends on the strategy and what they're trying to do and how much money they're trying to raise. Because if you're just running around saying, you've got a tariff and you've got a tariff and you have a tariff too, it's not gonna work very well. You kind of have to have a robust strategy and a plan for, okay, what's really going to happen? How much money are we looking to raise? What do we need to do with this? Um, and I have seen some of those numbers leaked from the Republicans and they are very fucking concerning. Um, I've seen numbers targeting as much as $2.5 trillion in tariffs coming from the Republicans saying if we raise $2.5 trillion in tariffs and we cut the Department of Education and we cut this and we cut this and we cut this, we can pay for the tax cuts and we can balance the budget if we cut all of these other things and raise $2.5 trillion in tariff fees. There's a math problem there. And the problem is we only import $3.8 trillion worth of goods into this country. If you're trying to raise $2.5 trillion off of $3.8 trillion in goods, you need a 65% blank blanket tariff to do that. That is simple fucking math. What is 2.5 divided by 3.8? It is 0 0.65 or 65%. That's just basic fucking math. That means everything that comes into this country immediately gets 65% more expensive. That means the amount of goods that are brought into this country is going to plummet you're not going to raise that 2.5 trillion because we're not going to be importing that much. So do you race to the bottom by just raising tariffs to make up for the lost imports and still raise your 2.5? Cause now you're just chasing yourself to the bottom and it's never going to work. The other flip side to that is if you increase the price of all foreign made products by 65% domestic product, domestic products will go up as well because Let's say I charge a dollar for my widget and the widget from China is now a dollar sixty five. Well, I ain't charging only a dollar for mine. Shit, if the if the foreign market value is a buck sixty five, I'm charging a buck fifty. I'm cashing in on that. Cause now I'm still fifteen cents lower per unit and I'm making fifty percent higher profit margin. I'm making an extra 50 cents on every fucking dollar. Hell yeah, I'm raising my prices because I'm still gonna be cheaper than the other guy you're still going to buy it because it's still cheaper. So you are not only going to increase foreign prices or prices on foreign production by 65%, you're also going to significantly increase the price of domestic products as well. That's capitalism. That is free market fucking capitalism, people. That is how it fucking works. People, <laughs> the prices are set by the fucking market. If the demand is there, those prices are going to go up, period doesn't really help with inflation, does it? That is the that is the epitome. That is like the textbook definition of cost push inflation. The cost of bringing those goods to market increased by 65%. That is a classic example of cost push inflation, period. That is inflation. Not making things any cheaper, is it? There's a math problem there. That's not politics. That's not policy. That is a fucking math problem. When it comes to oil and gas, there is another problem there. Right off the bat, drill baby drill, none of the oil companies are interested in doing that. They're just not interested. And this has been reported over and over again. 
And so Trump's solution to that, since Exxon immediately threw water on Trump's bill ba drill baby drill strategy, Trump's solution to that and response to that has been to go to OPEC and to beg them to lower prices. Speaking remotely at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, President Donald Trump announced that he would ask Saudi Arabia and the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries to take action to bring down the price of oil. You've got to bring it down, he said virtually on a call on Thursday. The problem here is you have another math problem. Every single time you drill a new well, it, it's cost millions and millions of dollars in equipment and time and man hours and everything. You have to meet a certain price per barrel, the break even price, to recoup your money and to make it worthwhile even doing. And I've said this a million times, the oil companies are not going to invest billions of dollars for the sake of cutting into their own profits. There is not a single company in this country whose job it is to lower your prices and to lose money. No company exists to lose money because, again, that's fucking capitalism. That's how it works. Every board of directors has a fiduciary duty to ensure that the company is profitable and protecting shareholder value. That is a requirement to be on a board of directors. No company in the world exists to lose money. So now when we look at things like break even price and we look and now these are averages and these numbers might shift here and there. But if we look at the break even price for different re regions and different types of wells, new, new wells versus old wells, Permian Basin new well break even price $70 a barrel. If oil is going for less than 70, they're losing money on those wells. Who's going to invest money into losing money? That ain't gonna fucking happen. Nobody wants it to go below 70. If Trump drives the, the price of oil below 60, which is where some analysts think it's gonna go, look at all of these groups of wells that are gonna be losing money. Oh, sorry, I hit the mute button on my mic. Look at all of these guys that are gonna be losing money if oil goes below 60. Do you think oil companies want that? No, that's not a politics problem. That's not a policy problem. That is a math problem. And the other problem for Trump is that Saudi Arabia has the same issue. Saudi, Aram, Saudi Aramco is the Saudi, you know, nationalized oil company. Saudi Arabia has plans for the future where they are planning on somewhere between 75 to $78 a barrel. That is what they are targeting to finance their internal projects. The oil companies want a stable price that they can plan on, that they can plan around, that they can say, okay, we can plan these projects. If we have a stable $75 to $80 a barrel range that we're targeting, $76, $78 is ideal. If we know that we that prices are going to remain there for a while and we have some stability, we can plan new projects around that as demand requires. We can, we can work around that. If you get Trump coming along saying, no, I want it 50, everybody's fucking losing money at 50. People are going out of business at 50. And we know this because Trump had to negotiate with OPEC and beg them to cut production twice during his administration because OPEC's production was too high, oil prices were getting too low, it was gonna start putting companies here out of business. When COVID happened and demand dropped through the fucking floor. What did Trump do? He went to OPEC plus and cut a deal with OPEC plus to slash production for several years. I think we're still under that plan. So nobody's really interested in his drill baby drill all the way down to $50 a barrel. Nobody wants that. That puts everybody out of business. That's not a politics problem. That is a fucking math problem.